It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obuchi, and it's great to have you here with us once again. We're going to be starting off the show, as usual, like we always do, looking back at the week that was. And I, uh, while we're doing that, I want to, of course, remind you to stay with us because we'll have an explosive show for you today, talking about a variety of things from entertainment to, of course, very health-conscious issues. But first, I have here with me, Ilya Wokikio. Well, thanks for being here today. Yeah, nice being here. And we're going to be, of course, going through some of the things that caught our eye during the week and um i mean there's a lot that's been happening of course talking about security and uh insecurity of course and <laughs> everything along those lines it continues to grab all the headlines uh, as it has in the last probably five six seven years in nigeria but it looks like things have shifted now to the niger delta which is where all of uh the explosions seem to be happening these days and um, we did hear reports during the week uh, about militants attacking communities you know in parts of um this is Ogun State now, of course, which is in the southwest. But I wanted to start, of course, with, uh, with the Niger Delta. And um, we did hear about a 14-day ultimatum uh, given to oil companies to leave River State. And we don't know um, how concrete that is, if they are going to follow through. I mean, we did hear, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, about threats to shoot down airplanes as well. That didn't happen. But one thing that's definitely happening is that pipelines are being bombarded, and the Nigerian economy is, su is suffering as a result of that. So. Um, what should the government be doing now? They've tried force. It looks like it hasn't worked. Uh, we're hearing that negotiations might be in the offing, but uh, we did hear that some of the people who were called to negotiate are saying that they don't, they don't want to be a part of it, like uh, the former Foreign Affairs Minister, Odeya Jumagobia. So what, what sort of approach should government be looking at now to, with dealing with the Niger Delta? Yeah, I, I think uh, for us to move ahead in the stage we are in, uh, we need to negotiate with these guys. Except if, you, if you're saying that we don't want to rely on, on oil again, because 95% uh, of what accrues to this country, you know, is from oil. And, and if we still want money from oil, we need to talk to these guys or else, you know, they will cripple the entire pr production of, of the country. So I think government is going about it in the right way. Uh, uh, I read on, was it Monday or Tuesday, that the minister of state for petroleum met with uh, some uh, ex-militant you know, at, at the Delta State Government House. So I think uh, it, it, it's the way to go. Violent and uh, attacking these, these guys you know, should go pari passu with it, but it shouldn't be the only thing. You know, they should use a, a carrot and stick approach. That is, you negotiate with them, and we need to deal with them, we deal with them too. But we're beginning to see a pattern develop here where it looks like every week there seems to be a new uh, group that comes out with very interesting names, <laughs> if I must say. We've heard Avengers and, you know, all the names along those lines. But what's the, what's the guarantee that if we negotiate with one group, another one is not going to spring up somewhere else? What, what sorts, how do we resolve this once and for all? Is this something that can be done in the short term? Yeah, I, I think it's something that can be done in, in the short term. Don't, don't forget that the government of uh, President uh, Yaradua came up with a, a program to rehabilitate these guys. And I think uh, uh, President uh, Momodou Buhari you know, has continued in, in the same line. But it, it's just a pity uh, that these guys are, are not beginning to come out. Because during the, those periods, we, we know that there were several mil militant groups. And it's saying that it's beginning to happen. And I think that... It's because uh, some of their leaders are being hunted around for corruption. And I don't want to mention names now, but, but you know why. I think that's the reason we are seeing all of this. You know, if, if, they, if the government of the day has decided not to hunt those people or go after them, you know, I don't think we'll be seeing all that we're seeing. But <laughs> that doesn't take away the fact that they also have, at least by, by many standards, valid, valid, agree, valid grievances uh, towards Nigeria. I mean, people have, we've seen countless documentaries about what the state of the Niger Delta is, these communities that have pretty much mm -hmm. built Nigeria and places like Abuja into fancy cities yes. with their communities looking the way they are. So whether or not um, they might be starting off all of this militancy again because of, like you said, uh, these alleged corruption uh, trials that are, that are being, that are starting, don't they have genuine grievances? Shouldn't we be working and addressing them? Well, I think uh, they do have genuine grievances, but you can be rest assured these things are things that they cost by themselves. Before now, uh, uh, the government of uh, President Yadra, uh, which uh, President Gulag also co continued, created uh, the Ministry of Niger Delta. There's the Niger Delta Development Commission. You know, they receive 13% derivation, you know, from... But these are all federal government organizations. Yes, and they are in those communities, and they give these guys money. What are their leaders doing with the funds that they get? 
you know nobody nobody knows this thing and now when they when they start bombing again they are destroying their environment and you know this thing just turn, t turns to a cycle i think for me i, I would want to advise the militants that you know if you have genuine grievances the best way to go about it is not to go and bomb oil pipelines don't, don't forget uh, the, the presidency inaugurated the cleanup of Ogoni land few few weeks ago you know they said that is going to take minimum of 20 years now you can imagine you begin to bomb new pipelines today and you begin to uh, destroy your environment and, and, and all that so if they do have genuine grievances there are better ways to go about it how you no know, there are legal ways to, to go about it you can negotiate you know there, there was a way uh, this this man that, that was killed in ogoni land there was a way he went about his, his stuff but that's Ken, Ken Sarawiwa. You know, you can you can do advocacy, diff, different things. You can engage the government rather than bomb, bomb places. And there is no how the militants can win the federal government. It has never happened anywhere. Militants would not win the government in power. It's not possible. So, but, but with, with the part that we're saying where the economy is beginning to take serious hits, what happens in the long run if they win the economic war? But it's not possible for them to win. The federal government would always win. But, and, 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 and the truth is, I, I don't know a portion blame yet until both sides sit down you know to to talk about the issues that are affecting both sides for us we need the oil we need the money that's coming from the oil as a nation because we've not diversified our economy for now and for them they need their economy they, they need their environment to be cleaned up they need op more opportunities for their people a lot of people are poor you know in the Niger Delta area those are the things they should be addressing not bombing uh, oil pipelines, not tr trying to, to send pe uh, the international oil companies away from their environment. So I think what they should be fighting for more is how to expand uh, the, the program that, is already, that has already been made available for them, the trainings, building of schools and those things. Those are the things they should, they should really fight for now and not the bombing of, of, of oil pipelines. Well, it's, it's definitely something that's going to be an ongoing conversation uh, with Nigerians. There's a lot of sides to it. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no way... Um, we have all the answers. Definitely, you don't have all the answers, no, but I, I mean, we keep we keep hoping that things get resolved uh, amicably yeah. with, without without lives being lost. But let's move on now to the economy, which we've already touched on, and uh, it looks like it's, the central bank finally finally shifted ground finally. Uh, on, on the forex <laughs> issue. Um, the naira was taking a huge beating, has been taking a huge beating for pretty much a year now, and there's been talks on and off about Mr. President, you know, letting things go. And he had said several times that he was not going to float the Naira. And people have said that there seems to be a pattern now where whenever Mr. President is out of the country, they seem to take these drastic decisions. <laughs> it happened with the full subsidy. It's happened now with Forex. I'm not, I don't know if it's a coincidence or anything, but people... Most people are excited that this has happened now. What, what does this portend for the economy? Well, uh, uh, well there, there was a news that came out of the economy uh, just this past week that immediately the CBN announced uh, the new policy. Around $800 billion was injected into the Nigerian stock exchange market. And, and, and so this is what uh, foreign investors have been praying for. You know, no investor wants to bring uh, use our money into a volatile market. When you know that, once you bring in your dollars in the next few days, you, or hours. You, 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 you know, or hours, it, it, it taking out something very less. And, and before now, a whole lot of them had withdrawn from the Nigerian economy. Most of them didn't pa participate in, in our stock market, but they're not beginning to come back because you know that market forces is actually going to determine how much you buy and sell. Uh, and, uh, so, so I think it's very good for, for the Nigerian economy. And as regards to what you said, I, I don't think any decision <laughs> can be made you know, without Mr. President's input. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's going to kick off officially tomorrow. Yeah, uh, from June the 20th is what uh, the CBN governor and said. So we're going to look at... In offloading their, their yeah. dollar. <laughs> so what happens tomorrow if the exchange rate is at, let's say, 400 naira to the dollar? Does that mean it's failed? No, no, no not necessarily. Like what they said about the for, uh, for subsidy to when you liberalize the market, you know, it brings in competition. And everybody wants to sell his own dollar at a very competitive, competitive rate. So, it, so at, at the beginning, it, it might be high, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it, will, it will fall to where it, where it ought to be. Yeah. I think we're all looking forward to that. I mean, the, the economy this year, it, half the year has already gone. We did have a, a, a negative GDP growth in the first quarter. We don't know what the second quarter is going to bring yet, but, I mean, whatever is going to boost the economy, I'm sure Nigerians will be, will be very happy with. Yes, yeah. Let's move on now to politics. And um, the National Assembly did get some negative reports <laughs> in the last couple of days. We did hear from the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria, James Etwiso. Um, he wrote a letter alleging 
um, that three members of the House of Representatives were caught up in a sex scandal in the United States where they went for an international visitors leadership program. Um, they were named uh, Honorable Samuel Icon, Mohamed Gololo, and Mark Bila from Benue, Bauchi, and Akwaibom State. Um, these honorable members have come out to say that it is a case of mistaken identity and they're ready to prove that they did nothing wrong and you know to clear their name and all of that. One of the honorable members in particular has tweeted repeatedly that he's willing to go back to the United mm -hmm. States and even face justice in that country. So it's, we don't know what the real case is, but most people have said for the U.S. Embassy to come out so categorically, they must have something, so very concrete you know, evidence. concrete to, before, before coming out this way. But the honorable members have said, well, we didn't do anything. So, I mean, it's, it, it, we don't know what to believe now, do we? Well, I would like to trust uh, our representative in the Federal House of Reps, uh, because I, I don't know if you saw something uh, on Twitter yesterday. You know, someone tweeted that uh, he, he was harassed in a bar in, I think, Warsaw or somewhere. You know, he, he, you know, he, 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 had, he hasn't been to the bar for some few months. And when his friend invited him for, for a drink over there, uh, one of the bartenders, uh, grabbed him and uh, you know I, I think they actually w was going to send him out you know because they said they accused him of harassing the lady the previous week and not paying for the drinks and all that and at the end of the day they, they do that to call the policeman and when they reviewed the CCTV they found that it was a clear case of mistaken identity and of course we've we, we've seen time and time again that uh, Caucasians white people generally do not identify, <laughs> you know, you don't know how to identify blacks, and that's why, you know, some criminal ones amongst us will use other people's passports, you know, to enter those places. Mm -hmm. And and it, it could really be a case of mistaken identity. I've, I've read uh, the statement of uh, uh, the rep, uh, Mark Agbila, yeah. and, and, he said, and he said that he never went to the Kappa because he never even drove a car while was in the U.S. and the car park was somewhere very far from, from where the hotel is located. So I, I think uh, the House should allow proper investigation to take its course. I think the U.S. Too shouldn't be too uh, irrational about this. You know, they, should, they should let proper investigation you know, take, take its course. But a lot of Nigerians have interestingly believed what the United States already <laughs> said. And it, it makes you wonder what... There's a reason for that. A, is there a reputation <laughs> problem? And uh, if the, these names are cleared now, what happens to their image? Because, I mean, these things are all over the internet already. Uh, People have already labeled them, and if they get cleared eventually, what then happens? Uh, well, uh, at the end of the day, I think they're going to have to fight for their rights. They, they, they will need to claim some damages if, at the end of the day, they, they find that the allegations were, were wrong. But, you know, I wouldn't blame Nigerians that much because we've seen things happen in Nigeria over and over again, whereby you have conference and these guys... <laughs> You know, you just go to iron stations to go bring in ladies and, and all that. So we, we, I, I know why Nigerians can be quite skeptical, but I think we should give everybody the benefit of doubt. You know, if there are no concrete evidence and you've not yet, you know, been uh, charged to court and court find, find you get guilty, I think we should still leave them the way they are. Okay. Just before we go, I want a one-word answer from you, yes or no. Uh, we did see reports that the National Assembly is discussing immunity for principal officers, the Speaker and the Senate President. Do you agree? That they should have immunity. <laughs> yes or no? No. Okay. Thank you very much, Kyo. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. We'll take a quick break now and be right back with more right here on Robin Minds. Please stay with us.